as we have talked about throughout the show today and seemingly for the last year, there are so many problems revealed in our policy making and and uh, problem solution process that have been revealed by this pandemic. A great example, uh, sort of a, a case in point, uh, keeping a list, holds on to the receipts, has been written by Robert Wright. Robert E. Wright is a senior research fellow at the American Institute for Economic Research. That's A-I-E-R. We've had some of their folks on before. They may, they've made for very good guests, particularly this last year, um, from folks who dig deep into the data. You know, if we're going to follow the science, let's follow the data. Let's follow where it goes. Let's actually look at real facts instead of opinions. Anyway, this this piece uh, was was published in a, an AIER on February 16th. It's entitled A Pandemic of Ignorance. We've posted it to the blog at michaelberryshow.com. But what I'd actually like to do is go lesson uh, one through five is how he lays this thing out and go one by one. Let me ask you, Robert, to start with lesson number one, doing nothing is often better than doing something. What did you mean by that? Uh, thanks. Uh, I'm, I'm into all that, uh, Mr. Barry. Um, yeah, doing doing nothing is, is usually better than, than doing something. And we, we've forgotten this. This used to be the default. Um, Americans understood that most problems uh, are are self-correcting, um, and, and this is uh, goes across a, a wide range of, of biological and economic and, and social uh, issues, uh, and w- would have worked, and and right now sort of is finally working uh, in terms of of, of COVID uh, as well. But uh, what it basically um, the the basic idea is is that um, variables will often um, move within a within a range, so you can't just take what's happening over the last little bit and extrapolate it out to uh, infinity and assume that things are going to be great or that things are going to be uh, aw- uh, uh, awful. Um, I'm uh, reminded of uh, a, a young a young journalist who blackened my door a few years ago uh, when I was uh, still teaching in South Dakota, and he thought he was going to win a Pulitzer or a Peabody or something because <laughs> he had noticed that um, <laughs> that commodity prices had been trending uh, upwards, and he just extrapolated out ten years and said, you know, in ten years all my money is going to be going for food, and I won't have any money for rent. <laughs> So um, I sat the young man down and uh, disabused him of that uh, of that notion. He d- apparently had never taken a, a course in economics, um, but what happens in uh, you know, free markets, of course, is that as that price goes higher and higher, there's more and more incentive for uh, somebody to um, to to add to the add to the supply, uh, and then that solves the the price uh, problem. Um, and prices start to, to head back down. So you can look at commodities prices and see them. They just, you know, they jiggle up and down. Uh, and thankfully, um, in, you know, robust uh, uh, free market economies like the United States had for a long time, they'll, it'll go up and down, but the range over time will actually decrease uh, in real terms. So that things like our food, um, not only doesn't does the price never never get astronomical, that uh, over over time it 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 trends it trends downward. You know so, what's interesting um, about this, Robert? I served on Houston yeah. City Council for six years. I was the mayor pro tem, and I found that many times the mayor would come to the table with the desire to raise taxes and spend money and create a new program and do all these things. And I would say, no, no, that's going to cause more problems than it solves. And people would say, well, what's your plan? You don't want to do anything. Doing nothing is not the answer. But, you know, I have found raising teenagers that you don't have to jump up and do something every time there's a problem. Sometimes you realize that the solution is worse than the problem. And I find that most of these big projects that Democrats come up with cause more problems then they solve. And I, I think you make a good point uh, uh, to that end. Let me get to your second point. Lesson number two. 
Market competition beats government monopoly almost every time. You know, it's sad that that's not just a stated fact that everyone believes, but unfortunately, that's where we are. Speak to that if you would. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's largely a matter of uh, incentives. Uh, so, um, you know, oftentimes individuals or, or, or companies that are competing against other individuals and companies, they have incentives to do things uh, quickly, correctly, uh, and at the lowest uh, possible cost. Uh, and the government's uh, often the exact opposite because, um, you know, if, if a government project uh, – uh, fails. Nobody nobody loses their jobs. Uh, in fact, as we've seen in New York, um, leaders can do egregious things and and remain uh, in office, uh, you know, in, indefinitely. Um, and so we we had a case up here in, in Mass- Massachusetts where uh, a, a young woman with two small children at home made a better website than the state of Massachusetts did. Uh, for uh, COVID COVID nineteen uh, vaccinations, one woman juggling two kids better than all of the uh, all the bureaucrats in Boston, and uh, the same thing in New York has also had a botched um, you know COVID vaccine um, uh, um, website. Uh, now to to you know to their to their uh, to their benefit, I guess the uh, you know apparently the government website designers are, are often instructed to make websites that don't work very well. Um, so maybe they thought that they were supposed to do that with COVID nineteen as well. But um, whereas most uh, government websites don't get a lot of public scrutiny, obviously the COVID nineteen vaccination <laughs> websites get get a lot of scrutiny. Oh yes, um, and they've just uh, you know they've 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 been disasters. So some, sometimes, you know, uh, governments will, will concede that they're incapable of, of, um, of doing these things and they will, um, you know, put it, put it out to bid to private contractors, uh, in the dumbest ways possible, um, in ways that don't really, um, stimulate uh, competition, but that, uh, simply, uh, give a monopoly to a private party who then, uh, you know, botches up the website or whatever project they're, they're trying to uh, they're, they're trying to work on. Um, it's it's very difficult to get people to focus on key causes and a and effects. So when things go bad, you know, oftentimes they just um, blame the blame the status quo instead of blaming the specific. Uh, the specific problem, which in, in the case of, of COVID was that, uh, you know, nobody really figured out uh, how, how the thing spread. Right. But, you know, b- back to the overarching point that market competition typically beats government monopoly, I think of Abe Lincoln's line that the philosophy of the schoolroom in one generation will be the philosophy of the government in the next. I think we have failed to teach the rules of market-based uh, free market economics. And I think that when you're going into an audience of folks that are not already receptive to at least listening to that argument, and they see the government as the comforting arms, the healing arms, the all caring, the all doing, it's a hard, hard argument to win. We're going to continue our conversation with Robert Wright, Senior Research Fellow at the American Institute for Economic Research, coming up next. We're talking to Robert Wright, Senior Research Fellow at the American Institute for Economic Research. The piece is entitled, A Pandemic of Ignorance. And folks, as we turn the corner, I'm in Texas, we've lifted the lockdown, we've we've removed the mask mandate. That's not the case across the country. We know that the Democrats are kicking and screaming, even my mayor and my county judge here, who are Democrats, they hate this going away. This gives them an incredible amount of power and relevance. They're on TV every day. They love this. But Robert Wright has written a piece called A Pandemic of Ignorance. And I hope what we can do as we turn the corner is find one silver lining out of this, and that is to learn the tendencies of those who would have the government take away our freedom in exchange for the perception of some safety and security. Lesson number three in Robert Wright's piece, everything comes at a cost, even when it appears to be free. What did you mean by that? 
Well, I, I meant something beyond you know opportunity cost or, or guns or butter. The notion that's um, you know very common uh, in, in economics that uh, you know the time or resources that you expend to achieve one goal are no longer uh, available to to achieve uh, some other some other goal. Um, more deeply, even policies that that might seem like a free lunch, where it's not obvious what you're giving up, um, can be very, very costly. And I think we've seen that again in the the, the vaccine uh, rollouts, because a lot of people uh, are um, not convinced that taking the, the vaccine is uh, in their best interest. And they're, they're not stupid, and they don't have to be any vaxxers to believe that, because very early on, the government decided that uh, they would grant a, a liability exemption to the manufacturers. Now, that might have you know seemed seemed like a like a free free lunch to, to government policymakers, but how many people in the public, um, you know, uh, thought about that exemption is well, then this must be a dangerous product, right? Otherwise, why would anyone ask for the uh, exemption? And why would the why would the government government grant it if they really wanted people to run out and get the vaccine? You know, they 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 should have um, mandated something like triple liability, uh, where if a, a vaccine injures a person, that they get not just their their cost back, but three times that. Um, now that would come at a cost too. Uh, you know, the the vaccines would have would have cost more, or maybe been been brought out uh, later after more thorough uh, testing. Um, but the overall point is that um, everything, you know, com com comes at a cost, and, and you have to be able to weigh those costs. And uh, governments uh, generally are not very good uh, at at doing so. You know, um, the consequences are dire, and and that that concerns me. It 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 concerns me terribly. Lesson number four. Popular ideas are not necessarily right, either morally or empirically. Yeah, well, you know, there's this old old joke. I think it's from Ben Franklin about uh, democracy just being two wolves and a sheep uh, deciding what's for, what's dinner. for dinner. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so the and and then the you know the two wolves will say, oh, you know, it's it's uh, obviously in in society's best interest if 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 we eat you, <laughs> um, but the sheep doesn't see, uh, you know, see things in that way. Um, the sheep's in the minority, but does that mean that, uh, you know, it should just allow the, the wolves to, uh, to, to consume them? Um, and, you know, obviously not. Um, they need to, you know, come up with, uh, with, with some other, some other policy, uh, like maybe eating the pig, um, and uh, let, letting letting the sheep go and, and do what uh, what it uh, you know what it wants to do, which is to eat, eat grass and whatnot. Um, so there there are all kinds of human wolves uh, that lurk out there, uh, not in the tall weeds, but in you know the crevices of, of legislation and, and and regulations. And uh, they're they're always trying to trick uh, unsuspecting voters into supporting policies that aren't in their best interest. So you can get policies like COVID lockdowns that uh, enjoy majority support in, in some areas, but that doesn't mean that uh, those policies are are the best for uh, everyone, even the people supporting them. <laughs> um, so uh, what what they can't, or, or when when they can't trick people um, into accepting, you know goofy policies like like lockdowns um, a lot of times these human wolves will will claim scientific backing uh, because you know studies have shown that uh, many people are are afraid or, or hesitant to uh, question people in in white white lab coats you know the scientists um, but those are the very people who should be uh, questioned uh, the most which was my um, lesson number five that scientists are usually wrong, and that actually is the design feature of science. What do you mean right? by that? I, I, want, I want people to pay attention to that. Lesson number well, five, scientists are yeah. usually wrong by design. What do you mean by that? Well, it, it, 
sometimes uh, people think that science is about proving theories, but it's really not. It's about not rejecting hypotheses. So theories spit out hypotheses. They, they spit out uh, predictions uh, about the way the world uh, works. And then good scientists are supposed to go out and, and to test those hypotheses. And if they reject the hypothesis, uh, then they need to work on uh, improving the, the theory. Um, but just because a, a particular hypothesis is accepted doesn't mean that that theory is, um, you know, the end all and, and be all explanation uh, for for the real world. Um, so you, they they have to keep testing and testing and testing. And what happened when you know, thankfully there was there was variation in the world and even in the United States regarding uh, COVID lockdowns. So the hypothesis that lockdowns worked could be tested by looking at places that didn't lock down or that, um, you know, got, got rid of their lockdowns relatively uh, early. And this is why there was so much uh, attention paid to, you know, usually out of the way places like Sweden and, and South Dakota, because they didn't lock down. And uh, yet, uh, you know, we, they, they didn't turn into hell on earth. Um, they did uh, just as well as, as, as places that uh, had, had very severe uh, lockdowns. Um, so, you know, that really brought the, the lockdown theory, if you will, um, in, into question. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they, the supporters for lockdowns just couldn't prove uh, that, uh, that, that they, were, they were helping. Well, and, and, and I think it's not even that, bringing Robert, up the opportunity cost. Yes. Part of that is the media builds these people up. I want to read a line from your piece that I think is so well written. Americans' lodestar should be the scientific method, uh, method not blind obedience to somebody in a wh- white lab coat, even especially those cloaked with the authority of government. We made Dr. Fauci, or the media did, into some rock star. Listen, folks, to Fauci and Cuomo. I think your voice on saying that the vaccines are safe uh, would be important. I said that as soon as uh, the vaccine is deemed ready and safe, I'll be the first one to take a vaccine. Uh, Maybe we enlist you. I'll do it with you. We'll do an ad telling New Yorkers it's safe to take the vaccine to, uh, to, you know, put us together. We're like the uh, modern day uh, De Niro and Pacino. You can be which whenever, whichever you want. You can be the De Niro or Pacino, <laughs> Fauci and Cuomo. Give- I think the moment that Fauci was on the front cover of magazines, staged with sunglasses on as if he was cool, I think that's probably where we've reached, we, we've, we've jumped the shark and nothing better exemplifies how wrong things are in this country than that that would happen. Robert Wright, I am unfortunately up against my clock. Thank you for being our guest. It's a wonderfully written piece. We have posted it to the blog at michaelberryshow.com. It appeared in AIER, A Pandemic of Ignorance. Come back and see us anytime, sir. I will. Thank you, Mr. Berry.